Okay, welcome again at Glory Baptist Church uh, in Nazareth. We are ready to worship the Lord. The day the Lord has made, we rejoice and we celebrate in Him according to His word. So it is the third day of May 2020, and we thank God that uh, He has kept us alive and He has given us this day again that we can come before Him, worship Him, and adore Him. So I want to welcome each and, and uh, all of us wherever we are, even those who are at home, uh, because it is time to stay home. And uh, so continue worshiping with us wherever you are, and may the Lord bless you. I want to start uh, this month of May. Uh, as per our church calendar, we are now ending stewardship, and so we look forward to help, for God helping us on how to end this goal, very precious goal in life, the goal of stewardship. We have given you every detail on the uh, weekly brochure. You can read it for yourself. It is online and it is also in the church. And as usual, during these times, you can come and uh, pray. After prayer, get one copy for yourself. Go and read it at home with your family. So, some of the announcements that we have before I sing the song, uh, the scripture reading for today is First Chronicles 29 from verse 1 to 5. And in the next three Sundays, I'll be preaching from the same same scriptures so you can plan to read the entire scripture. We are encouraging all of us to continue worshiping the Lord at home. Give your tithe and give your offerings and uh, make sure they get to the right place uh, to our second deacon who is the treasure of the church. Uh, so let's sing song number 123. Even if you are at home, you can open the Nimbo Zaymanietu. Song number 123 uh, in Swahili from Luke 18, verse 28. Petra Kasema, Tazama Sisi, Tumeviacha Vitu Vietu Viote na Kukufwata. I surrender all to Jesus. All to Jesus, I surrender. Yo te nam to de ya Yesu am pamo yo wote ni tampenda si I surrender 
and indeed unto Jesus we have to surrender such like times. So may the Lord bless you and God bless the church. Let us read from the book of First, First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 1 to 5. First Chronicles uh, chapter 29, I'm reading from verse 1 to 5 and I will put together several scriptures to bring the message of today to all of us. I'm reading from verse 1, First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 1 up to 5. The Bible I'm having in my hands reads this way. Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great because this palatial structure is not for man but for the Lord God. With all my resources I have provided for the temple of my God. Gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone and marble, all of these in large quantities. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of God. Over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple, 3,000 talents of gold, gold of offer, and 7,000 talents of refined silver for the overlay of the walls of the buildings, for the gold work and the silver work and for all the work to be done by the craftsmen. Now, who is willing to consecrate himself today to the Lord? I will also read in Swahili, so that for, for those who are uh, listening this, they can also be blessed with us. Ndipo mfalme Daudi akaliambia kusanyiko loti. Mwanangu Solomoni, yeye ambaye mungu amemchagua ni kijana mdogo na asiye na uzoefu kazi hii ni kubwa kwa sababu hekali hili la fahari si kwa ajili ya mwanadamu bali ni kwa ajili ya Bwana kwa uwezo wangu wote nimetoa kwa ajili ya hekali la Mungu wangu dhahabu kwa kazi za dhahabu fedha kwa ajili ya fedha shaba kwa kazi za shaba Chumba, chuma kwa kazi za chuma na miti kwa kazi za miti. Vivyo hivyo vito vya shohamu kwa ajili ya kutia kwenye vijalizo. Almasi, mawe ya rangi mbalimbali, aina zote za mawe ya thamani, marmar yote haya kwa wingi mno. Zaidi ya hayo kwa kujitolea kwangu Kwa ajili ya hekalu na mungu wangu, sasa ninatoa hazina zangu, mwenyewe za dhahabu na fedha kwa ajili ya hekalu na mungu wangu. Kwa uwezo na zaidi ya uwezo wangu, nimetoa kwa ajili ya hekalu hili takatifu. Talanda elfu tatu za dhahabu, dhahabu ya ofiri na talanda elfu saba za fedha safi iliyosafishwa kwa ajili ya kufunika kuta za hekalu kwa kazi ya dhahabu na kazi ya fedha na kwa kazi yote itakayofanywa na mafundi basi ni nani anayependa kujitoa kwa bwana leo may the lord bless his word i am bringing the message which i've been writing on our weekly uh, bulletin or brochure by saying giving as a Christian is giving to God. Amen. For us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we do not have a big issue or any problem as to why we give our offerings, as to why we give our lives, and as to why we give our families and even ourselves for the kingdom of God. 
Because we know giving as a Christian is not giving to any person. It's not giving to anything else, but it is giving to God. So we are going to look into three things or three areas of how Christian giving is giving to God. From the book that we have just read, First Chronicles, chapter 29, it is an interesting portion and part of the scriptures because it is talking about King David after being installed as a king. And the Bible talks about fighting all wars and he had now rested as a king ready to lead the entire Israel. This is when King, the King David is to the ark of the covenant of God. And as he was thinking about that, his mind came to a point whereby it said, I can see myself resting in a very nice palace. I've built a precious place where I enjoy as I did the people. And the next question was, or concern was, what about the ark of covenant of my God? And in his heart he felt that I need to build a magnificent temple or house or building whereby the ark of God can be staying inside, whereby people of God can come in and worship him. So in this book, we are seeing that the book itself uh, we know very well, I told you last time how it, it was written by Ezra. Ezra, the scribe, is the one who wrote this book. And he records a story of about 40 good years of Israel, Israel heritage. And so as he writes this book, the purpose of Second Chronicles is to unify God's people, to trace the Davidic line, the lines of King David. Where, how did David come to leadership? And how did he lead? as a king, a man after the heart of God. And he also wants to teach that genuine worship, I want you to get this, the book of Chronicles is written to teach God's people that genuine worship ought to be the center of an individual person and national life. Every person needs to worship. Worship should be the center of our life. And worship should be the center of a nation. I know even now why some of these problems are facing us in the world. It is not because God cannot stop this sickness. But sometimes when we move away from worshiping God, when we turn to worshiping other things, such like calamities are obvious, according to the word of God, they will come. And so to me I'm saying the issue of coronavirus is that God has allowed it to happen the way it is happening. So that some of us can learn that the center of worship as an individual and as a nation should be on the Lord God Almighty. Amen. So, that is why we have the book of Chronicles. The, both first and even second Chronicles. In chapter 17 and verse 1, if you read, the Bible says, After David was settled in his palace, he said to Nathan the prophet, one thing the world needs to learn is that every king needs to walk with a prophet. Every king needs to hear the voice of the priest. Failure to that brings a fall of a nation. Even if the nation is rich, even if the nation is big, if they don't hear the voice of God, who is the king of kings and lord of lords, that nation stands to fall down. So the prophet Nathan came and he said, here I am. This is King David saying, here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under a tent. He was, as, 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 as long as he thought, when he thought about that, the answer came. If you continue reading, he was answered and he responded in prayer. Actually, I was very much happy when I was reading the prayer of King David when he was answered about the work he desired to do. You can read for yourself in uh, First Chronicles chapter 17, verse 3 to 27. King David opening up his heart to God and telling God, thank you. Who am I? I was just as a young shepherd taking care of my father's flock. And there, Lord, you came for me and you raised me 
to the kingship of your, of your people, the entire Israel territory. Lord, I give myself to you. And when we continue looking into this, after, after the prayer, verse 1 actually, uh, David went further and arranged, what David did, he went further, and arranged the, the, the materials for the building of the temple. Verse 1 says, the house of the Lord God is to be here. Which means David even knew where the house of God was to be. He did not just build it anywhere else. He said, the house of the Lord, I know where the house of the Lord is supposed to be. There is a time I preached the message from 1 Samuel 24, verse 18. If you read 1 Samuel verse, chapter 24, verse 18, the very place where King David went, Eh? and offered an, a, a sacrifice to the Lord as a, a sacrifice of repentance. He was repenting over the sin of counting Israel. It is the same, same place whereby the temple is now being built. So he says, I know this is the place where the temple of my Lord God is supposed to be built. And there, in the land of the Jebusites, that was in Jerusalem, the temple was to be built, even if David is not building, his son, who is given the responsibility of building King Solomon, will build the house there. Now, as we look into all this, I don't know if you saw one single word in chapter 29, verse 1, whereby King David is saying, I want to build a palatial structure to the Lord God Almighty. Which means he's not just building something just for the sake of building. He wants to build something that when the whole world looks at it, they can say the God of these people is a great God. Now, let me just say, we don't need to focus much on building buildings when it comes to building. The responsibility, the main responsibility we have as a church is building people. Because a church is not a, a building that is built with stones and all this kind of earthly materials. A church of Jesus, the ecclesia, is God's people. So we need to build people. But let me give you a challenge as well. But the building we build for the worship of God can also be a testimony to the world about who or how great our God is. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we do God's work, we need to be very careful because what we do for the kingdom of God also speaks volumes as a witness to what we know or how we think or how we, we, we gauge our God. Where is our God? And so, we can learn three good things from this testimony of King David. From what David thought about God. Remember I'm saying, giving as a Christian is giving to God. One, God's work is to be done by the giving of God's people. Praise the name of the Lord. Whenever we think about God's work, even now, as we stay in homes, as we don't come together to gather because of the problems that we, we are having all over the world, we don't need to forget that the work of God is to be done by the giving of God's people. If I am a man of God, if I am a people of God, and if you are the person who belongs to God, remember, the work of God is waiting for you. The work of God is waiting for us. God does not come from heaven to do what he's supposed to do now. He does what he wants to do through his people. Yeah. Verse 1 uh, to 2 of the same book we read, verse 1, verse 29. Allow me to read again. The Bible says, Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great. Imagine King David was seeing what was to be built even before it was built. The task is great. And I pity my son Solomon if he's going to make it. Uh, and he goes on by saying, verse 2, with all my resources I have provided for the temple of my God. God's work is to be done by the giving of God's people. That is what we need to understand and remember. We need to have big dreams, big thoughts of God's work. Like now we know very well that some of our people even here in our country, they are starving. They, are, they need even just something to put on the table for their children, for their families. There are people who are sleeping hungry in this country. 
How can we help such like people? The giving of God's people can help the church to achieve such like goal of touching lives of needy people. So that is what we need to remember. David gave for the work of God to be done. And Solomon, we can read even Solomon himself. I don't know if you read chapter, you can just open the next page in 2 Chronicles chapter 2. Verse 1, you can see how death how King Solomon now, when Solomon comes to leadership, he takes over from his father. This is how he plans the work to be done. David had already organized and given out the materials. But here now, Solomon gave orders to build a temple for the name of the Lord and a royal palace for himself. He, con he conscripted 70,000 men as carriers and 80,000 as stone cutters in the hills and 3,600 as four men over them. Solomon sent this message to Hiram, king of Tyre. What is this teaching us? Even the material king Solomon used to do God's work, they were important. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. They he imported and he brought in skilled men. He even brought people from other nations who were skilled because he knew he's working on a noble task. He's working on a work, not a work of man, but a work that should bring glory and honor to God. So it is possible, I know, and I've said this, to do things sometimes when we think about doing God's work. We can do the way we think about doing it. But let me tell you, again, whatever we do for God, or for God's work. It is also a testimony to God himself, to us, his people, and even to those who are outside of how we value our God. Amen. God's work is to be done by the giving of God's people. We are the right people who knows how big, how good our God is. And that's what we need to do. Secondly, God's people are to give with the devotion to God. Whenever we think about giving, as Christians, we should give devotionally. We need to give as a devotion to our Lord God. We need to give as worship. Look into verse 3. In fact, I saw something that really blessed my heart in verse 3. David uses one word, actually more than three times. And when you see something like that repeated, one word repeated in the Bible, there is significance of that same one. In verse 3 of 1 Chronicles chapter 29, David says this, Besides, eh, in my devotion to the temple of my God, not the word my. Let me start it again, verse 3. He says in verse 3, I'm, I'm, I'm reading verse 3 of 1 Chronicles chapter 29. Besides, in my devotion, to the temple of my God. I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God. Over and above everything I provided for this holy temple. He mentions the word my God, my devotion. What I'm giving, I'm not just giving, I'm giving as a devotion to whom I know my God giving of God's people is to be done devotionally. We need to give in a way that our hearts are to God, they love God. That is why King David is saying, I gave it to my God, to the work of my God, to the temple of my God, I gave. Now, when we talk about giving devotionally, what, how, how, how is this supposed to look like? Giving devotionally is the giving up of all. Praise the name of Jesus. Even before you think about what you have or what you don't have, you first think about giving yourself to God. That is the devotional way of giving I'm talking about. The giving up of all. You give your life, you give your time, you give your energy, you give everything that you have. Why? Because serving the Lord is a noble idea. And this one calls us to giving Him devotionally. When you talk about giving devotionally, we are talking about giving with full of love. We give with full of loyalty. We don't want any person to check us. 
the Lord himself, we, we give loyalty to our God. Remember our key scripture as a church in this place, Colossians 3.23. All for the glory of God and not man. Brothers and sisters, that was what I mean by giving devotionally to the Almighty God. There is strength in what we are doing. We give strongly. Hmm? We exercise our strength in doing what we are supposed to do. In devotional giving, we also give prayerfully. You don't just give. You tell God, you are the one who knows everything about me. I'm not giving so that people can say anything. It is giving because I know you. It is a prayer to you. That is why King David gave gold for gold work. Praise the name of the Lord. Silver for the silver work. He gave bronze for the bronze work. The Bible says he gave iron for the iron work. He even gave wood for the woodwork. And as we read in first in uh, in Second Chronicles, he imported, King Solomon even imported this wood. He and you can continue reading on on how he did this work. Giving as a Christian is giving to God, and so we need to give devotionally. Hallelujah. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, the Bible says in First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 18, that we need to stand firm. We need to let nothing move us. And the Bible says, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Why? Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. Give devotion. Amen. Our labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. Let us give devotionally whenever we think about giving to God. Finally, giving as a Christian is giving to God. I want us to know that God's people are to give this giving opportunity to other people as well. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I want to repeat this again. As God's people, we need to give this giving opportunity to other people as well. We need to know as Christians that Christian giving is giving to God, yes, and it is an opportunity. Praise the name of the Lord. It is an opportunity. Whenever God allows us to worship Him and to give for His work, it is an opportunity, brothers and sisters. It is a privilege. It is a honor. It is not a, 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 a time that is given to all people. It is a privilege to be a giver in God's work. And so let us give other people this opportunity as well. Verse 5, when King David had done all that he had done, he had prepared everything he had prepared. Verse 5 says, now, which means I've done my part. I've done what I feel I am supposed to do. I've done as a servant of God, my son. I've played my role. I have brought in all that want me to, 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 to bring in. Lord, I've tried my level best. Do you know what he says? Now, who is willing to consecrate the, themselves to the Lord today? I know the language that is out there for now. Many people are saying, oh, we are not working. Oh, the business has collapsed. Oh, we have problems. We do not have this and do not have this. Let me tell you, Christian giving, even when we don't have, that is the time to give. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. And I love this, because God does not just mean we need to give only money. We can give our lives. We can, leave what, we can give whatever we have. I want to celebrate some great women in this country. I read them on our daily newspaper, and some of us maybe saw this over the media. It is about women who just felt the work our security men are doing, the policemen in a roadblock who are making sure that people who are in Nairobi, they stay in Nairobi, and those people who are in another county, they just remain in the other county. What these women did, they just decided to start cooking food and take to these policemen on the road. 
Isn't that giving for sure? It is giving. And so this is not time for excuses that we are in problems. We are in this. This is the best time to give to the Lord God Almighty. So God's people are also to give other people opportunities to give. That is what the Bible teaches us. God's work is God's work for God's people. Did you hear this? Yeah. God's work is God's work for God's people. Amen. And so we must learn always to make sure God's people are involved in doing God's work. And not only the God's people who are there today, even in the God's people in the generations to come. This is the best time to continue teaching even our children that we can worship God no matter what happens, even in our times and in our generation. Giving us a Christian is a, a God-given opportunity. And let us learn to give our people, our, our future generations, to learn to give to the Almighty God. Extend this opportunity to other people as well. That is what I'm saying this morning. Now, as I bring to the closure of this message, Christian giving is giving to God. Never forget that. As a follower of Jesus Christ, wherever you are, never forget that giving to God or giving as a Christian is giving to God. Never be disturbed with what you have done. Now, what do we learn from David? The man who loved God, the king. We learn that God's work is to be done by the giving of God's people. That is something to learn this morning, brothers and sisters, wherever you are. Even when you are in your house, learn this. That God's work is to be done by the giving of God's people. So we are the ones who need to make sure God's work is done well and is done in a way that bringeth glory and honor to Him. Secondly, God's people are to give with devotion to God. Whatever you do or whenever, whenever you think about giving, give devotionally. Give knowing that it is not giving to anyone, it's not giving to just any, any place, it is giving to the Lord God Almighty. We are celebrating King David. He's no longer alive today. He's somewhere there waiting for, the, for his reward now, waiting for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But here we are today in this century celebrating what he did because he gave devotionally. He did not give to please any man. He gave to, as a devotion to his creator, as a devotion to God who made him to be what he is. By the way, we are what we are because of the Lord himself. Even our walking, our, the, whatever we try to do, even if you are a farmer, without God you cannot do farming. In business, in one place, wherever you are, even in education sector, without God, you cannot be in school. You cannot do what you are doing. We are doing what we are doing because of God. And so that is why we, when we give, we need to give devotionally. Actually, as I will be continuing with the same message, this, uh, some part of this month, before we celebrate the seed sowing Sunday on 31st, I want us to know that this message can, can bring revival, can bring change in our lives. Do it devotionally and God will bless your life. And finally, God's people are to give other people an opportunity of giving. Giving is a privilege. Giving is an opportunity. And that's why I've been giving out even the announcements. As you worship together, as a family at home, worship God. Give your offerings. Give your time. And give them to God. Even me today, I'm giving because I know giving is an opportunity. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to finish by singing the same song again. Yote kwa Yesu. And after singing this, I will pray. If you want to give your life to Jesus, give your life to Jesus today. The very first step you need to do is not even giving your things. Give your life to Jesus first. And the other things will fall. Because everything belongs to Him. Song number 123. Yote nam tolea Yesu. Yote nam tolea Yesu. Nam pamo yo wote. Ni tampenda si kuzote. Nam wandama kilasa.
Son Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we come to you. We want to say thank you again for giving us this privilege and honor to come and worship you in your altar, O King of Glory. We say thank you, Father, and with all humility, we pray that you are going to help us and prepare us to worship you again in a manner that will bring glory and honor to you this month of May, the year 2020. We pray for so many people who are passing through difficulties this time, O Jehovah Lord. People who are struggling in life. There are people who have problems. They do not have even food to eat. There are people who do not have even a place where to stay. We pray for them, O my Father, that King of Glory, you are going to help us, O my Lord, together to know that even in all these uh, challenging times and moments, you are still God, and you are still on the throne, and you are still taking care of us, O oh my Father and my God. We pray even for the people who have lost their beloved ones. We pray for them, O oh my Father and my God, that our Father are going to encourage them and strengthen them to know that even in those difficult times, you are still there to help us together. Lord, we thank you even for what you are doing in our country. The Lord, you are helping us together to fight this pandemic, to fight the problem that is causing all these life difficulties. And so, Father, help us as we work together, as we pray together, and as we do whatever we can do. I pray for our people wherever they are right now. I pray for the men, the women, the children, the youth of our church. The Lord, you bless them wherever they are. Protect them this time, O King of Glory. Protect them from all these evils, O my Father. Pray that, Father, you are going to give them good health, even as they stay in their homes. That, our Father, you are going to help them. I pray for the families. I pray for them together. May the peace of Jesus be their strength wherever they are. Father, we thank you. We bless you. And we celebrate you for, for allowing us today again to come and worship you. We speak blessings to our people. Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your care. I pray just like your servant King David, that we shall remember to remain humble, to, to, to uplift you, to worship you, and know that we are what we are because of you, Lord. Thank you, my Father. We surrender our lives to you 
and we give ourselves fully to you. Father God, I want to pray for those who want to give their lives to you. That King of Kings and Lord of Lords, this is the right time for people to come to you. Those who are, who are receiving salvation, Lord, save them. Help them, my Father, to give their lives to you as Lord and Savior. Because you want our lives passed before anything else from us, oh my Father. And Lord, I pray even for the giving of our offerings, our tithe, our love gifts to your work this month, oh my Father and my God. That it will be not just a normal giving, it will be a devotional way of giving to your work, oh my Father and my God. And so bless whatever we give for you. Bless everything that we shall be giving for you, O King of Glory. For you are the best gift and the number one gift for us. You gave your life for us to be what we are today. Thank you, Father. We love you. We serve you gladly because you are our Lord and our God. And now our Father who is at in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom, shalom. God bless you. See you again God's time and in God's day. Amen. Thank you.